<laughs> okay, uh, depressed shift minutes here. <sighs> Trying to move on and start to implement this code. So what I need to do is, okay, so what I've done successfully, somewhat successfully in the code so far, is compute the errors. The output errors and the hidden errors. And I've added, I have a transpose function, I have a matrix mul a multiply function. So what I need to do is compute the deltas, the gradients. I need to figure out how, what I need to do to change all these weights. I should say that I did say something I think wrong in the previous video. So I might as well at least say it here, which is that in, with matrix multiplication, and this shouldn't be an asterisk here, I don't know, you know, this, you can think of the dot product or just an X for matrix multiplication. I need to have the A, this is matrix A and this is matrix B. A, the number of columns in A has to be the same as the number of rows in B. So this could have, as long as it has one column, this could have three rows and this could have uh, eight columns. But this is one dimensional this way, one dimensional this way. And that's going to that's always give us, in the end, the correct dimensions for the weight matrix. So I kind of misstated that in the previous video. I don't know if, if you were worried about that. I don't know if correcting it by now, hopefully that's enough. So let's try to uh, put this stuff in here. Now one thing that I think I really need to do, unfortunately, is that I had this lovely idea previously of like, oh, what I need to do first to get the error, right, is I need to feed the inputs in, get the output, and compare it to the target, right? That's going to give me the errors. And then I can compute the hidden error by doing the weighted percentage stuff that I did previously. The issue is, once I start wanting to do all this stuff, it would be nice if I could remember all the parts that happened during the feed forward process. So as much as I just wanted to call feed forward here, I think it's actually going to work better if I run the feed forward stuff here. So I'm going to actually grab all of this, copy it, and I'm going to paste it right here. So there's definitely some redundancy in the code, but this is going to help me figure it out. So uh, I need to feed everything forward. Inputs, hidden, which then gets the bias, passes through sigmoid. So hidden, this hidden matrix is left in the state of the values coming out of here. Good. Then I have the output, the adding the bias, and the output is left in the state of it coming out. Now, in the state of it coming out of here. Now, previously, <coughs> I had taken the outputs from the root from the feed forward function. I don't want to do that anymore. In fact, I guess if I'm being consistent, I should call these outputs. So now I have the outputs, plus I have like all the other stuff that happened before in case I need to reuse it. Um, and I have the targets, and I can have the output errors. So now I need the gradients. So what do I need for the gradient? I'm going to call this let gradient equal uh, outputs. Um, okay, so how am I going to do this? How do I do them? I was like, oh, I don't have NumPy. This is where you really need NumPy, which is a Python library for doing matrix calculations. So let me think about this. I need to, um, I need to take those outputs, which have already been passed through sigmoid, and multiply it. I mean, this is what I need to do, but this won't work, right? I need to calculate this gradient as those outputs, the derivative, outputs times 1 minus outputs. So I have to do this with my matrix library. So I need to somehow get this gradient, which is this piece right here. The nice thing is I can actually use functionality that I have built into the matrix library. So for example, I have that map function. So I can take every element of output and set it equal to output it, that element times 1 minus itself. So what I need is another function, right? Much like I have sigmoid, what I need is the derivative of sigmoid. Now this, there's a little bit of something strange that's going to go on here. Let me just write this. If I write a function called d sigmoid, what I really mean is return sigmoid of x times 1 minus sigmoid of x. This, technically speaking, is the derivative of sigmoid. <laughs> but that's actually not what I want to do here, because if, you've, if you're following along, uh, and where am I here in train, I've already mapped the output through sigmoid. So actually what I want is, and I, I kind of like, I would, like, I would just want to call it like fake dig C sigmoid, but I'm just going to put y in here, and I'm going to comment this out, and kind of as if y is, I'm just changing the variable name, y has already been sigmoided, um, and I'm going to say return y times 1 minus y. So what I can do now to, for, 
uh, to calculate this gradients is I can basically say outputs, I kind of want to call it gradient, but right, outputs dot map, um, and maybe I should make a copy of it or something, d sigmoid. Right, so now I've taken outputs and I've set each element equal to this. Now I need to element wise multiply that by the error. So I need to say outputs. Now here's the thing. In my matrix library, this is like, I have this right here. The multiply function currently, if it gets a matrix, it does what's, what I refer to element wise multiplication, which I'm referring to as the Hadamard product. Um, so otherwise, so I guess what I'm going to, I'm going to keep this. Um, and I'm going to say outputs.multiply by output errors. There we go. So now I've done this piece and this piece. Now I need to multiply it by the learning rate. Do I even have, uh, I, all I've been waiting my whole life just to get to the point where I can put the learning rate in the code. Because I feel like once you have the learning rate in the code, I'm kind of done. So let's make that a variable. This dot learning rate. I don't know. I'm just going to set equal to like 0.1 right now. And so now I also need to say outputs dot multiply by learning rate. And now what I need to do, I've done this whole piece here. All I need to do is take what came out of hidden, transpose it, and do the matrix, the, the matrix product, matrix multiplication between that matrix and this matrix. And then I have all the delta weights and I can just adjust them. I, you know, I've got to talk about stochastic, et cetera, but let, let's just, let me, let me just, <laughs> let me try to get through what I'm doing here. All right, I now am going to say, uh, what am I looking for? I'm looking for this particular array Right, this particular vector, I need to get let hidden t, which is hidden transpose, is matrix dot transpose hidden, and then let deltas weight weight. What am I calling these? Um, like the this dot weights i h. So I'm going to say weights h o deltas equals matrix dot multiply. So this is I'm going to put a comment in here, calculate gradient, um, and then calculate deltas, calculate deltas, matrix dot multiply. What do I want to multiply? I've got to do this in the right order. <laughs> I want the column vector, which is the, the gradients thing that I've been doing, and the row vector, which is the output to hit. Okay. So I'm going to say multiply. Outputs, so I, I hate that I've done this. Does the map function, what I want to have is a, I, you know what I want is I want a static version of the map function that will pull out, make it new. So let me do that really quickly. So where's the map function? Um, map. I made a static, <laughs> I made a static version already. How exciting. Oh, life is good sometimes. <laughs> oh, that's so lucky. So I want to do this. Let gradients equal matrix dot map. This solves all my problems. Outputs d sigmoid. No, I don't need. All right. So I want to map all the outputs with sigmo the derivative of sigmoid. Then multiply by output errors. Multiply by the learning rate. Transpose the hidden output. And then mul matrix multiply the gradients by the hidden output transposed, and now <laughs> weight h, oh this, this dot weight h o dot add uh, weight h o deltas. So this is me just like taking, going into, just going nuts and saying I calculated those deltas, change all the weights by those deltas. So I'm, I don't know, this is, is this right? Let's, let's, we'll think about this more later. Oh, I need the bias. Well, that's fine. I'm going to do the bias. All right, so that's good. Now I have to deal with the hidden layer. This should be much easier now that I've done this once. Okay? 
um, I need to calculate the hidden gradient, which is matrix.map, the hidden, what came out of hidden, um, uh, passed through D sigmoid. Then I need to take the hidden gradient. And what did I do up here? I multiplied by the output errors, but have I calculated the hidden errors? I have calculated the hidden errors somewhere. I did back propagation. Hidden errors, right there. Oh, how lucky, lucky me. <laughs> hidden gradient, multiply by hidden errors. Then hidden gradient, multiply by learning rate. And that's this dot learning rate. And did I forget that up here? Yeah, this, this dot learning rate, right? Um, and then, so this is calculate hidden gradient. Now, oh my god, calculate uh, hidden deltas, or you know, the, uh, it's input to hidden, input to hidden, I'll just input to hidden deltas. Okay, so that is, just like I did up here, the first thing I need to do is transpose input, inputs t equals inputs dot transpose, oh no, matrix dot transpose inputs, matrix dot transpose inputs, okay, and then, what did I call those deltas? I call these weight hidden output deltas. So let weight input hidden deltas equal matrix dot multiply the inputs. No, no, not the inputs. <clears throat> the gradients times the transposed inputs. The hidden gradient times the, uh, uh, what do I call that? Inputs T. Transposed inputs. And then, <laughs> I can just adjust those. My goodness. I've just, le I'm, spe I, I, I'm speechless. I'm without speech. <laughs> okay. I think I might be done with this. Um, except for the bias. I'm going to save that for, I'm going to add the bias in a separate video because I feel like I just need a break. So let's think about this. I might have made some mistakes, but I think that I've gotten through this. I think what I've done is I have figured out a way to use the train function to calculate the errors, use back propagation to chop up and divide the error and assign blame all over the place. <laughs> right? I know the output errors, I need to figure out the hidden layers errors. Then, that's what I've got here. Those were the first two videos. In this, the third video, I kind of talked through these formulas. And now in this video, I have used the math function to calculate the gradient, the errors, times the derivative of the output. I'm adding the learning rate in. I'm multiplying it by what's coming in transposed to get the weight deltas. I've done that for both this layer, this matrix, and this matrix. Again, at some point, I really need to extract. If I'm really going to continue with this library to make it something useful, I need to be able to have multiple hidden layers. And this back propagation would happen in a loop. But I'm doing this two separate distinct chunks just to understand them. And then I'm going to adjust all the weights. So there's things that I haven't talked about yet. Number one is I've got to adjust the bias values. And number two is when and where should I be doing this? Should I run through all of my training data and get like the kind of average error of everything and then adjust all the weights? Or should I each time adjust the weights for each record? Or should I do batches? Like send in these 10 data points, adjust. Send in these 10, adjust. And that has to do with stochastic gradient descent versus a batch gradient descent. So I'm going to get there. Let me take a break, take a few deep breaths, and make a separate video where I adjust the biases. I might have made some, something absolutely completely wrong. So if you want, you're going to have to watch all the way through to find out if I have other things that I have to correct later, which I may. But um, I'm going to change the biases. And then I'm finally going to do, I'm just going to try to train it on the XOR to see if I've done this correctly. XOR would be a really simple problem. So it's a good test problem for me to see if my code is mostly working correctly. But before I go, 
there is one error that I can point out here. This is input to hidden. Thank you. Okay, see you in the next video.